Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a student and a saleswoman. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Hello, my name is Garcia. I phoned earlier about finding accommodation. Ah, yes, Mr. Garcia, I took your call. Please take a seat. You said on the phone that you are studying at the university. That's right. I'm currently in university digs, but I have decided to move out. May I ask why? Well, the accommodation itself is fine, very nice in fact, but it's catered accommodation, and I find having to have my meals at fixed times somewhat restrictive. I tried to get into self-catering accommodation, but there's very little of that available, and as I will be a second-year student next academic year, I wasn't given a place. I see. We have many students coming to us who are in the same situation. Do you intend to live alone or share with someone? I have two friends, from Spain and from Colombia, who would like to share with me. We thought it would be a good idea to rent a small house together. Does that sound sensible to you? Sure. In fact, I recommend it. Where are you from, Mr. Garcia? I'm from Mexico. Really? I went there on holiday last year. Lovely. So, you're looking for a three-bedroom house. How about a flat? Would that be okay? Yes, that would be fine too. But if the rents are roughly the same, we'd prefer a house with a small garden, just somewhere where we can sit outside in the sunshine. Of course. We do have houses, but more flats are available at the moment. Is there any particular area you'd like to live in? Obviously, we'd like to be close to the university if possible, but not too close. My experience is that people living in the proximity of the uni tend to get a lot of people dropping in. We'd like to avoid that. I understand. Places further from the uni are also a little cheaper in general. Before we go on, could I take down a few details? Of course. My full name is Manuel Garcia. I currently live at 35C Campus Lane. Thank you. And your telephone number and email address? My mobile number is 0453672348. My email address is garcia nuk at email dot uk. How old are you and your future housemates? I'm 19. My friends are 19 and 20. And are you all male? Yes. Smokers? No. Nope. OK, how much would you be prepared to pay altogether? We heard that 200 to 250 pounds a month would be possible. Yes, that's about right. Accommodation in this town is below the average for the country as a whole. I'd recommend something closer to £250, since the lower paid accommodation can be rather poor quality. Yes, it's important to feel good in a home. We intend to move in at the beginning of July. We've all got placements over the summer holiday. That's good. A lot of landlords will offer a small discount if they know that you'll be there throughout the year. I think we'll find something decent for around £230 a month. I should point out that utilities are not included. I understand. We expected that. By the way, we understand that you will charge us a fee for arranging accommodation. Is that correct? Yes, it is. We charge you half a month's rent and the landlord half a month's rent. That includes the cost of drawing up a rental agreement. All our landlords require a deposit of a month's rent, payable with the first month's rent, upon signing the agreement. That's fine. Now, I'll just write down the kind of place you're looking for. I don't think that'll be a problem. Do you have any other requirements? Uh, let me think for a minute. Oh, of course, how could I forget? It must be furnished. We don't mind buying kitchen utensils. A TV, yes, we'll need that. We don't need a video or DVD player. Oh, and a washing machine. That's essential. As is an internet connection. 
I presume all the accommodation you offer has a cooker. Yes, you don't have to worry about that. Do you prefer a bath or shower?、Uh, we'd prefer to have a shower, but we're not fussy about that. Right then, I'll send you the details of three or four of the most suitable properties later today by email. Then you can let me know whether you'd like to see any of the properties, or whether you'd prefer to see details of some others. Thank you for dropping by, Mr. Garcia. Now listen again. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to ten. Hello, my name is Garcia. I phoned earlier about finding accommodation. Ah, yes, Mr. Garcia. I took your call. Please take a seat. You said on the phone that you are studying at the university. That's right. I'm currently in University Digs, but I have decided to move out. May I ask why? Well, the accommodation itself is fine, very nice, in fact, but it's catered accommodation, and I find having to have my meals at fixed times somewhat restrictive. I tried to get into self-catering accommodation, but there's very little of that available, and as I will be a second-year student next academic year, I wasn't given a place. I see. We have many students coming to us who are in the same situation. Do you intend to live alone or share with someone? I have two friends from Spain and from Colombia, who would like to share with me. We thought it would be a good idea to rent a small house together. Does that sound sensible to you? Sure. In fact, I recommend it. Where are you from, Mr. Garcia? I'm from Mexico. Really? I went there on holiday last year. Lovely. So you're looking for a three-bedroom house? How about a flat? Would that be okay? Yes, that would be fine too. But if the rents are roughly the same, we'd prefer a house with a small garden, just somewhere where we can sit outside in the sunshine. Of course, we do have houses, but more flats are available at the moment. Is there any particular area you'd like to live in? Obviously, we'd like to be close to the university if possible, but not too close. My experience is that people living in the proximity of the uni tend to get a lot of people dropping in. We'd like to avoid that. I understand. Places further from the uni are also a little cheaper in general. Before we go on, could I take down a few details? Of course. My full name is Manuel Garcia. I currently live at 35C Campus Lane. Thank you. And your telephone number and email address? My mobile number is o four five three six seven two three four eight. My email address is. Garcia, nuk at email dot uk. How old are you and your future housemates? I'm nineteen. My friends are nineteen and twenty. And are you all male? Yes. Smokers? No.、Nope. Okay. How much would you be prepared to pay altogether? We heard that two hundred to two hundred and fifty pounds a month would be possible. Yes, that's about right. Accommodation in this town is below the average for the country as a whole. I'd recommend something closer to two hundred and fifty pounds, since the lower-paid accommodation can be rather poor quality. Yes, it's important to feel good in a home. We intend to move in at the beginning of July. We've all got placements over the summer holiday. That's good. A lot of landlords will offer a small discount if they know that you'll be there throughout the year. I think we'll find something decent for around two hundred and thirty pounds a month. I should point out that utilities are not included. I understand. We expected that. By the way, we understand that you will charge us a fee for arranging accommodation. Is that correct? Yes, it is. We charge you half a month's rent and the landlord half a month's rent. That includes the cost of drawing up a rental agreement. All our landlords require a deposit of a month's rent. Payable with the first month's rent upon signing the agreement. That's fine. Now I'll just write down the kind of place you're looking for. I don't think that'll be a problem. Do you have any other requirements? Uh, let me think for a minute. Oh, of course. How could I forget? It must be furnished. We don't mind buying kitchen utensils. A TV. Yes, we'll need that. We don't need a video or DVD player. 
Oh, and a washing machine. That's essential. As is an internet connection. I presume all the accommodation you offer has a cooker. Yes, you don't have to worry about that. Do you prefer a bath or shower?、Uh, we'd prefer to have a shower, but we're not fussy about that. Right then, I'll send you the details of three or four of the most suitable properties later today by email. Then you can let me know whether you'd like to see any of the properties or whether you'd prefer to see details of some others. Thank you for dropping by, Mr. Garcia. That is the end of section one. Section two. You will hear part of a local radio program about fighting air pollution in Canadian towns. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fourteen. Good morning, folks, and welcome to the information roundup on your own local radio station. This is Larry Knowles talking to you this morning on Tuesday, the twenty-fifth of May. And the first item coming up is a reminder to you all out there about Canadian Clean Air Day, which is on June sixth. In case you weren't around for the last one. This is a chance for Canadians everywhere to focus on the problems of air pollution and to actually try to do something to help reduce the problem. How many Canadians do you think die annually because of air pollution? Two thousand? Three thousand? Well, the rate is a staggering five thousand, and it's likely to grow unless we do something. And. It's this concern with your health that's the driving force behind the government campaign that is sponsoring Clean Air Day. So, what causes air pollution in the first place? Well, the transportation sector accounts for 27 percent of all greenhouse gases produced in Canada. It's also the biggest source of that thick, polluted air from traffic fumes that we call smog, and it's the tiny particles and ground-level ozone in smog. That are the main causes of health problems and even deaths across the country. Of course, it's worse in the big cities. But researchers have only recently realized that all you need are low levels of air pollution to seriously damage your health. So we're all at risk. You now have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen. And answer questions fifteen to twenty. So, what can we do to fight air pollution? Well, it should be pretty obvious by now that the way we get to and from work every day can have a big impact on the air we breathe. So, the easiest action you can take on Clean Air Day is to accept what we call the commuter challenge and get to work on foot or by cycling for a change. If you have to use your car. Try carpooling and share the drive, or better still, use public transit. If everyone tries this for just one day, you'll be amazed by the difference it can make to the air in our towns and cities. But there's more you can do to improve air quality. For example, you can plant trees, and if you don't have a garden, then you can do your bit in other ways. For instance. Did you know that modern, improved wood stoves can reduce wood smoke by as much as eighty to ninety percent? So you can make a big difference if you upgrade the appliances you use in your home. The government is also working hard on your behalf to clean up our air. Its priority is to reduce the emissions that cause smog, and they have clear plans to get there. Last year. Canada and the United States agreed to reduce emissions on both sides of the border between the two countries, and they plan to reach their targets in the next few years. The government's also taking action to get cleaner fuels. It's already reduced the sulfur contained in gasoline, and it hopes to reach the reduction target for sulfur in diesel by next year. But the measures don't just focus on the motorist. 
The federal government's also working to reduce emissions from power plants and factories right across the provinces. You can find out all about government action and all the plans for Clean Air Day events. Now listen again. Good morning, folks, and welcome to the information roundup on your own local radio station. This is Larry Knowles talking to you this morning on Tuesday, the twenty-fifth of May. And the first item coming up is a reminder to you all out there about Canadian Clean Air Day, which is on June sixth. In case you weren't around for the last one, this is a chance for Canadians everywhere to focus on the problems of air pollution and to actually try to do something to help reduce the problem. How many Canadians do you think die annually because of air pollution? Two thousand? Three thousand? Well, the rate is a staggering five thousand, and it's likely to grow unless we do something. And it's this concern with your health that's the driving force behind the government campaign that is sponsoring Clean Air Day. So, what causes air pollution in the first place? Well, the transportation sector accounts for 27% of all greenhouse gases produced in Canada. It's also the biggest source of that thick, polluted air from traffic fumes that we call smog, and it's the tiny particles and ground-level ozone in smog that are the main causes of health problems and even deaths across the country. Of course, it's worse in the big cities, but researchers have only recently realized. That all you need are low levels of air pollution to seriously damage your health, so we're all at risk. Now listen, and answer questions fifteen to twenty. So, what can we do to fight air pollution? Well, it should be pretty obvious by now that the way we get to and from work every day can have a big impact on the air we breathe. So the easiest action you can take on Clean Air Day is to accept what we call the commuter challenge and get to work on foot or by cycling for a change. If you have to use your car, try carpooling and share the drive, or better still, use public transit. If everyone tries this for just one day, you'll be amazed by the difference it can make to the air in our towns and cities. But there's more you can do to improve air quality. For example. You can plant trees, and if you don't have a garden, then you can do your bit in other ways. For instance, did you know that modern, improved wood stoves can reduce wood smoke by as much as eighty to ninety percent? So you can make a big difference if you upgrade the appliances you use in your home. The government is also working hard on your behalf to clean up our air. Its priority is to reduce the emissions that cause smog. And they have clear plans to get there. Last year, Canada and the United States agreed to reduce emissions on both sides of the border between the two countries, and they plan to reach their targets in the next few years. The government's also taking action to get cleaner fuels. It's already reduced the sulfur contained in gasoline, and it hopes to reach the reduction target for sulfur in diesel by next year. But the measures don't just focus on the motorist. The federal government's also working to reduce emissions from power plants and factories right across the provinces. You can find out all about government action and all the plans for Clean Air Day events. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.